pretty crazy. January 5th, afternoon of January 5th, 2018, in the lunar cycle Misamiko Komiatos, last of the long night moon. We're gonna be moving into Gatto now, which is named after the time that, you know, the period where everybody's starving because all the food stores have dwindled. <laughs> and here, you know, still open water in front of the beaver lodge. They made a big food cache. I don't think they've needed a lot of it. You know, rewind the clocks back to September or October. I would have never predicted we were going to have a winter this mild. You know, looking at how the how the beavers had prepared. You know, they'd prepared for the long haul. And uh, turned out that's not what's happening. So it's going to go down on the record books, I'm sure, as a quite an unusual winter. And in my books, it's going to go down as probably the most memorable, um, maybe the most traumatic winter in my life. We'll, we'll find out. We'll see how this plays out. But a few days ago, I was evicted from the house by Mahoney. I'm sure some of you who follow my channel could easily sort out why that might be. Um, but, you know, basically comes down to violations of the relationship on my part. And and Mahoney's uh, wanting a separation from me now. Well, not that she wanted it, but I seem to have forced her hand. We'll see how things play out. The last three days have been pretty dramatic. I, I taped myself a little bit the first morning that I was you know, the first, when I first got into my Jeep with the, with the things that I was taking with me. Um, <laughs> Cause Mahoney woke me up at like four o'clock in the morning and she's like, get out. She already had some of my stuff packed. Right now I've got my life in the Jeep as you know, I like, Mahoney woke me up at 4 o'clock this morning. She had already packed a bunch of my stuff. Just threw it in trash bags. And, um, and she's like, you know, come pack the rest of your stuff and get out. And, uh, that was at 4 o'clock. It's, you know, it's just after 8 o'clock now, and I've spent four hours partially packing and then um, and then a lot of time you know pleading for her to change her mind I, I really didn't want to leave the house because it feels to me like stepping out of the house is a big deal you know I mean I, I kind of I hope that things change within a few days or something but I don't know if they will um, and they, they weren't going to change this morning. I tried and tried, you know, tried to, uh, to not leave. I, I didn't want to walk out the door, but here I am. <laughs> and I'm really worried about the animals. You know, if Mahoney pushes forward with a s separation, then... I'm going to have to rehome my birds, my snakes, 
my my Derek bird who I'm very close with who has really a kind of special um, very special significance to me but I'm not likely to find somewhere where I can keep a magpie other than uh, camping out here so I have packed I've pa I, it was weird you know going through and trying to decide okay I've got so much room in the Jeep and what are the essential things that I need to you know just carry forward with my businesses and you know what are the essential things that I I need to pack in case the other stuff uh, that I that I own gets destroyed or something you know what do I need to pack so I packed you know the basic tools for my businesses and I packed um, I packed my camping gear because it's a good good likelihood I'm gonna be camping tonight I got the day to try to figure that out and But also last night, well, this stuff was going down. Um, one of our dogs had puppies, the long-haired dog, Princess. And uh, she had four puppies. One of them is stillborn, and I have it here. So this one, this little girl didn't make it. Mahoney really tried to uh, to rescue this dog. Lots of attempts at resuscitation and such, and getting her breathing. And they could feel a heartbeat for a while, and there was two gasps that this that this baby made, but it just didn't make it. So I'm going to take it out here into the area where um, where I adopted Derek from, and where one of our favorite dogs. You know, the our, we had a little Chihuahua named Dottie for the first part of our marriage, all the way through. You know, from the time she was a puppy until she was an old lady and passed away. And she's down here in that same area, her remains. So I'm gonna bring this little puppy there, and then try to sort out my day. Well, here's where that little one will stay. Our other dog, Dottie, is just in here. Her remains. Derek's parents' nest is here. The one they've been actively using. The one he was born in is, the remains of the one he's born in is right there. I don't know what the significance of me being brought back here today is, but. Um, it's one of those synchronicities you got to consider, right? So I, I messaged my brother, and then uh, he called, and I talked to him a little bit. Yeah, this is <laughs> this going to be a difficult time here for uh, old Rye. So. I didn't end up, as I thought I might, I didn't end up camping in the coolies. I didn't end up sleeping in my Jeep, you know. Um, Chelsea took me in and I've been able to, to sleep at her apartment the last few nights. For most of that, she's been away. Um, she's a nurse and she's working in another town about an hour away and it's closer, you know, the residence where she works is closer uh, to her parents' house than here in Lethbridge, so, you know, while she's out there, she stays at her parents and she gave me room to do what I needed to do here. Um, in terms of uh, you know doing 
what negotiating I could around the drama of the whole thing. And she'll be back tonight. Um, tonight I'm not sure what I'm going to do. I had a civil conversation today for the first time with Mahoney. And she's basically, you know, giving me some terms um, whereby I can still have access to the house and sleep there, um, you know, in a separate bedroom. Um, and you know and we can uh, move forward and try to get ourselves situated so that the separation isn't going to like destroy us you know financially or anything like that right so I basically get to be Mahoney's roommate housemate Mahoney and Sheen's housemate for a bit um, you know until we sort things out but what, what? <laughs> almost went down but uh, you know on certain terms too like obviously I'm not allowed to bring my friend around so that's what's shaking in my world and uh, that is quite shaking <laughs> it's all super super new and I can't really say you know where things will end up but I, we're gonna find out we're gonna find out meanwhile life has to continue and um, I'm trying to stay you know optimistic about all of this stuff and look at it as an opportunity for growth and you know without mistakes and without adversity when do you grow so I'm gonna try to keep positive or regenerate some positivity I've been in a pretty deep funk the last few days um, you know as you might imagine because worlds come toppling down and, and that's me imagine Mahoney you know rehomed uh, two of my rescue birds actually the the one that was flying I, I did a release yesterday at the same residence where I picked him up and it was pretty cool because you know even though he kind of floundered at first in his flight um, he eventually picked things up and wound up pretty high perched pretty highly in uh, one of the trees there and the other crows who are probably his family um, some you know by some relation uh, whether it's his parents or um, you know parents and siblings or extended family I'm sure he's related because you know he was right from there but in any case they came to check him out and uh, I think he'll be fine the other one I brought to somebody who said they would be willing to adopt and that one was the one I call baby crow Kira is still at the house but I've lined up an adoption for her tomorrow um, Oscar I'm not gonna adopt out my cripple crow I'm not gonna adopt him out you know I'm gonna I'm gonna take care of Oscar one way or another he's not hard to take care of he doesn't make a lot of noise he doesn't need a lot of room you know, he just needs somewhere to sit and a little bit of a little rug or something to to jump around on. He wants to move about. 
you know. But, um, yeah, so I, I plan to take care of Oscar. Mahoney says Derek and, uh, um, our other magpie. <laughs> can't believe I can't even remember names, but my head's pretty mucky at the moment. But the magpies can stay, you know. Derek is very close to us. Uh, as all this was unfolding and uh, in the high drama, my, my biggest concerns actually were, you know, I was worried about Derek because he's not going to understand what's going on if he, he's, you know, it's like our baby. And if, you, if we had to shuffle him off onto somebody else, he's not going to understand. He's a, smart, he's a smart creature, you know. So, well, here comes the train. So yeah, Alex. Mahoney's keeping Derek and Alex. Alex is the one-eyed magpie. And she'll take care of the dogs, but I gotta rehome Fizz. The male dog that just doesn't get along well with the rest of the pack. We'll see what happens. So there's one hell of a weekly update. 